Hi, welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to talk about the equivalence problem for DFAs. And this can be done for NFAs or regular expressions, but because we can just convert them to DFAs if we wanted to. But we're going to talk specifically about DFAs today. So the problem here is going to be, I'm going to give you two DFAs. So I'm going to call them D1 and D2. So these two guys are DFAs. So D1, D2 are DFAs. And uh, the thing I want to test about them is whether or not they have the same language. So this is uh, important for, <laughs> as, as an instructor or professor, you want to know whether a student's submission matches the, uh, the model solution. And so the EQ test, if this is in fact decidable, would help us <laughs> to reduce the amount of grading that is needed. Um, another reason you would want to uh, solve this problem is if I have some model and I have a, a simpler version of the same model, are they in fact the same? Uh, and it turns out that this is decidable. And I'll show you three different ways of doing it. So uh, one fact that we can use is what does equality really mean? So if I have the two languages being the same, like this, if I want to check if two sets of the same thing, then the most obvious way of checking that they're the same is to uh, show that one is a subset of the other and the other one and vice versa. So L of D1 is a subset of D2, and D1 contains D2. So if each one is a subset of the other, then they must be equal. That's the only possibility. So that's uh, one way that we'll actually prove this. So if we look at this uh, set, or at least the expression A is a subset of B, is there another way that we could phrase that? And it turns out there is a very useful one. Which So this is true if and only if A intersection, the complement of B, is empty. And this kind of makes sense because um, this expression down here is saying uh, all the strings that are in A and not in B, there are no such strings. So if you look at a Venn diagram of what the, the this looks like, let's say that this is A and this is B, then this set right here is saying all the strings that are in A and not in B at the same time. And so that's all of this stuff right here. And if we want these two circles to be the same thing, there should be nothing right here. And it actually kind of makes sense if we apply this in the other direction of whether B is a subset of A. That's this stuff over on this side. So we want both of those two sets to be the same. So we want uh, LD1 intersection the complement of D2. So that's everything that's in that D1 accepts that D2 doesn't. I want that to be empty. And I want the other direction too. L of D2 intersection the complement of D1. I want that guy to be empty too. Uh, I want both of these to be empty. And you might think, oh, let's just do the intersection of both of these sets. It turns out that we need to do the union of the two sets. So this is the same thing as saying that if I take uh, the first one, so this is, if I can write it correctly, so this is the first one. I want it to be empty. I'm going to union that with the other guy. So D2 intersection D1 complement. I did not write that one very well. So one. And so I want this whole thing to be empty. And the reason is, if either one of these is not empty, then the two sets are not the same. So uh, I want it so that if either one of these is not empty, then the whole thing is not empty, which is the case with union. If either one of them is not empty, then uh, the result is not empty. But if both of them are empty, then uh, this is empty. So 
The basic idea then, so the basic idea, build a DFA for this. So if we can build a DFA for all of this stuff, because it just involves doing intersections, which is part, which is why we introduced the product construction, the complement operation, which is easily done with DFAs, and union, which is again product construction. So we can build a giant uh, DFA for this whole thing. So as a first step, I would just make a DFA for this. And then all I just check is whether or not the language of this gigantic DFA is empty. And we know how to do that because we showed before that the eDFA problem is decidable. So then run the decider for E sub DFA on this big DFA. And then report whether the answer was yes or no. Okay, so this is just an observation of what does it mean for two sets to be the same? And we looked at one formulation, one is a subset of the other in both directions, and we phrased it so that we want the two sets to be empty, and then we just built a DFA off of it. This doesn't work for CFGs, or at least this method doesn't work, because uh, CFLs are not closed under intersection or complement. Okay, there, may, there might possibly be a different way, although you could show that it's undecidable, uh, but it, this particular method won't work directly for CFGs for that reason. All right, so what's another way that we can prove this? So this is method two. One way that you can do this is, so one fact that you can show about DFAs is that, uh, the minimal DFA for language L is unique. So that means if I minimize to if I minimize a DFA and I minimize a different DFA for the same language, then I'm going to get the identically same DFA. So the same transitions, same states, maybe different names of the states, but the, the structure is inherently the same. So I'm not going to prove that here because this is, because I've actually proved it on the channel before, but it's actually not that hard to prove. The, I think I'm getting notifications. So uh, one way to use this to our benefit is to uh, minimize the two given DFAs. So the the idea here is to minimize the two given DFAs and then check if they are identically the same. Okay. And, and that's a lot easier. The checking it, that they're the same is much easier than it was up here. Um, but the part that kind of is kind of crummy is the minimization, which takes actually uh, quite a bit longer than up here in, in general. But that is one way that you can actually prove that they're the same, because this is a fact specifically about DFAs. It is not true for NFAs, but it is true for DFAs. In fact, it's not even true for context-free grammars or anything like that. It's only true for DFAs. I'm not even sure if it's true for regular expressions. Put in the comments whether I'm wrong about that. But I think it's not true for regular expressions. All right, so the third method is to utilize uh, a different fact, which is based on the pumping lemma. So this is based on the pumping lemma. And what it means is... If we, t so here's the idea. So if we test all strings up to a certain length uh, on both DFAs, and the answer is the same for all of them, uh, yeah, same for all, then 
the DFAs are the same or have e equivalent language. I know that's a mouthful. But uh, if we just test strings up to a certain point, then there's no reason to check any string that's longer than that uh, because the naive algorithm is uh, for i greater than or equal to 1, test all strings of length i uh, on both machines or both DFAs. If we just did that, then this method will, in principle, run forever because uh, there's no stopping of this loop. So if there's a way that we can actually stop the, the testing of this up to a certain point, then uh, we can show that the DFAs are in fact the same. So uh, the basic idea is to look at the pumping length for the for the um, for the given DFAs. So I'm not going to actually show the whole thing here, but the idea here is based, uh, oh, not based. So it's uh, it's computing um, a number, which I'll let you figure out how to actually figure out what number that is, based uh, based on number on the number of states for the given DFAs okay and uh, because remember for the pumping lemma we utilize the fact that if we had strings of length at least a number of states then we had guaranteed that there was a repeat somewhere a repeated state somewhere so it turns out that if we compute some a number based on the number of states uh, for those two different given DFAs because those two DFAs might have a different number of states and so their corresponding pumping lengths in some sense are maybe different and then what you do from there is uh, test all strings up to this length and this uh, definitely runs on a finite amount of time because uh, the number of strings up to a, fi a fixed length, a, a finite length, that number is in fact finite. And so we can uh, run the decider for a DFA many, many times because that takes a finite amount of time. There's only a finite number of strings to ever consider. So this is actually a completely different way to show that two DFAs are the same. The answer for both DFAs must be the same. So when one says accept, the other one says accept, and when the other one doesn't, the, 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 they both don't. So uh, the only crummy thing about this is that uh, the process is way slower. Uh, just to give you an example, if we have to test all strings up to length n, for example, then, and let's say that the alphabet was zeros and ones, then the number of strings up to a certain length would be exponential in n, 2 to the n in some way. Whereas up here, if the number of states was, let's say, n and m, then the number of states right here would be n times m, n times m, and then let's say that's 2 times n times m in total. So this right here is n times m states, this one is also n times m states because the, the complement operation doesn't introduce any more states, then the union right here in principle will have us uh, multiply these, uh, these two sizes. So at the end of the day, we're going to get n squared times m squared states, which is way, 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 way less than 2 to the n in general. And so this method is far superior in terms of the running time that is needed to solve it. But there are three different ways, in fact, to show that two DFAs have the same language. And in fact, there may be other ways, but these are three simple ways of doing it.
So hopefully that was interesting. Leave comments about checking for a quality of DFAs into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. I'm currently doing one-on-one -on -one tutoring. If you want to take part in that, my email is in the video description below. And as always, I'll see you next time.